Welcome. Yeah. So problem 17. And uh, to start, let's use the proper grammar. And so, right, limit is B goes to infinity, integral negative B to B of this here. Now, at this stage, we make a crucial observation, which is um, here in the exponent of E, we'd love to have after this second term minus 2x cubed, we'd love to have a minus 1 here. Um, and you'll see why we'd want that. But yeah, I would love to have this here. Now, and having this, if I just put it there, what will I have done? I will have multiplied what was there before, which is this here, right? I will have multiplied it by e to the minus 1. And so, so long as I divide by e to the minus 1, I get to keep this here. So I'm going to do that, yeah? Now, dividing by e to the minus 1 is same as multiplying by e, so I prefer to do that. Um, and so I'll multiply by e there so that I get to keep my minus 1 right here. Now, why did I want this minus 1 so bad? Because... If in these three terms here, you factor out a negative one, then what you will have, which is x to the sixth plus 2x cubed plus 1, is exactly x cubed plus 1 all squared. So that's why this is so useful. It's got to be of uh, great convenience, and it is. So let's first write it in what we just recognized it is, which is um, like this, right? And then and next, we're going to make a substitution that t be equal to x cubed plus 1. Yeah, now if t is equal to x cubed plus 1, then this follows from which this follows, right? Okay, um, crucially, as um, x goes to positive infinity, t goes to positive infinity. But more importantly, as x goes to negative infinity, t goes to negative infinity, yeah? So as x goes to positive and negative infinity, respectively, so does t, yeah? All right, cool, cool, cool. So now... Um, to show that we've changed from x to t, let's use instead of b and a, but otherwise I'm just uh, making the substitutions and rewriting our integral now in terms of t. But wait, it's not quite in terms of t because we've got this 3x squared right there that was right there. But not a problem because dx is dt over 3x squared, so we see that it's going to disappear. And so we go like that, and now our integral is all in terms of t. Okay, cool. So we go. Uh, lim is a goes to infinity, uh, and then, yeah, the e that we needed to have, but, yeah, um, this is all good. But um, I did one little thing, which is I wrote this t squared as t times t, where I've grouped the second t in this part, right? And um, you'll see why I wanted to do that, uh, but it's basically because we're going to do integration by parts. Recall the integration by parts formula said this here, yeah? Okay, so looking at this then, the integrand, uh, we're going to pick u to be this t here, this lonely t, and dv is going to be the rest of it, right? Okay, so from that, we see that uh, first du is simply dt, and v you could work out more carefully. It's not very hard to um, see, uh, but yeah, v has to be this here, yeah? Okay, so then uh, this here, which is integral u dv, negative a to a, is going to be equal to uh, uv uh, minus integral v du, negative a to a, right? And uh, crucially, this e is multiplying everything following it. So let's put the e there and a parenthesis. Yeah, okay, cool. And that's the uv part. And then minus integral v du. But this minus is going to turn into a plus because v right here has a minus sign, right? Right there. And also this 2 in the denominator, we could write in front of uh, the uh, this integral right here as a half, right? Okay, okay, okay. So the plus and then the half and then integral and then v du. So here's the rest of uh, v. And I say rest of v because we've taken out the 2, right? And then uh, the uh, minus is in integrated right there, right? Okay, and then, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And then now uh, we have to remember we're going from negative a to a. So we put those on, right? Now, um, if you plug in a and then a negative a, it won't make a difference here because both a and negative a are going to be squared with this t squared right there, right? And so um, you're going to have e to the negative a squared both when you plug in a and when you plug in negative a. And the impact of that is as a goes to infinity, they're both going to go to zero, right? Like you could do it more carefully if you'd like. I'm kind of skipping some details here. But you should be able to gather because um, if you have e to the negative a squared, then you could write it in the denominator as e to the positive a squared. And so as a goes to infinity, the denominator will be overwhelming the numerator, which will just be like a or negative a from this part, right? Okay. All right. All right. 
And that's in, in both parts. When you plug in A and negative A and do the evaluation, they both go to zero. Okay, so uh, then we're saying that um, our integral really like uh, reduces to uh, this here, right? E times, uh, and then the divide by two uh, here is integrated with the E. So I wrote E over two, and then uh, E over two times the integral from negative infinity to, uh, well, negative A to A of E to the minus T squared DT, but now we don't uh, have to write this limit here. We could uh, put put it back, right? Like kind of use the reverse of what we did to start, right? Like, and so uh, put uh, e over two negative infinity to infinity of e minus t squared dt. Ah, do you recognize this guy? Um, okay, I have a video dedicated to it, about an eight minute video. And so I'm not gonna like show you how to do this integral right here. I'll just leave a link to that video below this video. But this is the uh, very famous Gaussian integral. And we know its value is uh, root pi. And therefore, our final answer is going to be e over two times root pi. Yeah. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care.